Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. I'm Jordan Kanegi and today we're out here, we're talking winter steelhead and we're talking one of the oldest tricks in the book and that's fishing row. We're going to talk top to bottom, rod, reel, line, all the way down to how to tie your egg loop to use this row or these eggs to target these beautiful winter steelhead. Stay tuned, you guys are going to learn a ton in this video. So there's two methods that we're going to talk about today in how to fish with row. First one is going to be the float setup. We're going to be drifting it down the river with a float and weight with a slip bobber to get that, that presentation down in front of the fish. The second way, the probably the most old school way to fish row is by drift fishing. So we'll show you the setup, show you the rod selection that you're going to want to use to use this setup drift fishing these eggs down the bottom of the river also. So where we're going to start first though is with the float setup. What I have here next to me is the Okuma Guide Select Pro 9-9-6-12 rod. It's a little underweight, 6-12 to 12 is very light, but it's wonderful for this adaption because we're fishing smaller rivers, sometimes bigger, but you want something that's long, either a 9-9 or the 10-6 in the 6-12 to 12 model, so that you can make those delicate mends and not inflict your float as that those eggs are bouncing along the river. You want to be able to make mends, keep that line up off the water, and give a very natural presentation because this is about as natural of, of bait that we can possibly use out there on the river. So I like the 9-9 because it keeps you up and out of the trees it allows you to fish a little bit more crowded water or brushy water so that you can cast a little easier the 10-6 is great if you're fishing in big water where you have a lot of room to mend uh, it adds that extra foot of arm length for you and it allows you to get a nice perfect mend every time that you lift your rod tip up so what I have this reeled with is the Okuma Kaimar C40 I love the C40 because it has a bigger spool and it has a little bit more pickup. The bigger spool is nice because you can extend those drifts and if you do hook into a big fish, you have more line on your reel to fight these fish down the river. I like to use the 40 pound braid because it allows you to have a little more diameter with that line which makes your mends a lot nicer. That line doesn't sink down into the water while you're floating your drift through that run. So the 40 pound is great for that because it doesn't sink really. It's not crucial but what I like to do off of that braided line is run a 20 pound bumper using a blood knot of about 6 to 12 feet. I like to think about what's the deepest hole I'm going to fish all day long and I'll make my bumper just about that long, usually about 12 to 15 feet. So I use the 20 pound P-Line Tactical Fluoro for that, which is really nice because it has a lot smaller diameter than the SS uh, and it's very clear. That's why they call it the tactical. So from there, I'm going to go down using a, a rubber bobber stop or your thread bobber stop, whichever you prefer. I have a half ounce float on here today. If you're fishing a really small creek or a small river, you can go with some kind of fixed float. Uh, and or if you're fishing something bigger, you can go all the way up to three quarter or one ounce, whatever you want or whatever's gonna adapt best to the kind of water that you're fishing. But for what river I'm fishing today, I'm using a half ounce float down to a three way swivel where I've attached a little piece of pencil lead. A lot of people like to either tie even a little bit of line off to that three way swivel and use hollow core lead or your Dave's Tangle Free. Uh, I like the pencil lead because it's quick and easy uh, and I can change weights throughout the day or to each hole with, with whatever the depth is of that hole so I can quickly change weight and be down in front of those fish. So going from here I have 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon going out about three, three and a half feet. You don't want to go too long with this leader length because what will happen is these eggs are going to be floating your weight's going to go to the bottom and those eggs are going to go further up in the water column than you think. So keeping a somewhat shorter leader or even adding a little split shot into the middle of it can be very crucial uh, depending on how fast of water you're fishing. If you're fishing a fast run, you're going to need a little bit more weight to stay down. If you're fishing a slow, you can get it down there and drift that those eggs through that slow hole and get a good presentation through different water levels. So. What I'm going to do next for you guys, I'm going to demonstrate probably the most important part of fishing row, and that's how to keep it on your hook. And I'm going to demonstrate a quick and easy blood knot that I like to use. We have different tutorials on our YouTube channel already on how to tie a lot of different knots, but this is my quickest, easiest, and f most favorite way to tie this blood knot when I'm out here on the river. So what I have here is a size 2 Mustad hook. I love these size 2s. They're great for the steelhead because you're going to be using a smaller bait, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But I'm going to show you my favorite little egg Loop. I'm going to run this braid, or excuse me, this floral straight through that hook there. I'm going to give myself about a three or four inch tag, let's say about five, and then I'm going to grab that hook shank at the very end, grabbing the line as well, just like so. So I have this tag end. I'm going to bring it around and make a little loop, just a little piggy here. We're going to suck that down to where we have that out about a half an inch. 
What I'm now gonna do is grab that line, keeping this bit, that loop in my other hand, my left hand, and I'm gonna do seven to 10 wraps, whichever you prefer, whatever your lucky number is. So I'm gonna go three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go with eight today, I'm feeling eight. I'm gonna take this line now, I'm gonna put it right back through this pig ear. Now I'm gonna put this in my mouth to hold it down, but then you're gonna take that, once you've put this tag end through that loop, you're gonna take this tag end, either use your teeth or whatever you need to, and you're gonna pull on your main line. So I'm gonna grab that, pull down on my main line until it's tight, and there you have it, a little egg loop. So what that does, that allows you to slide that line up and down on your hook shank. Again, we could have went another eight loops if we wanted to, and that knot stays in place a little bit better. But we're gonna wrap that around and be able to move that back and forth to apply our eggs every time. And that's crucial or else you're gonna, your bait will fly off every time you go to cast if you don't have some sort of egg loop. So I'm gonna trim that tag end. And what that allows me to do now is push that line back and forth through and add my little bait of eggs. So why I'm going with a size two hook and why I'm staying pretty small is because we're not gonna use very big of clusters of eggs as we would for Chinook or Coho. We're gonna use mainly about fingernail size, if not even smaller sometimes. What you can also do is either add any kind of your Mad River eggs, these soft eggs go great, we thread them up your line. You can use any kind of smaller beads or even bigger beads, I've got them with 10 or 12 mils on the line. Or you can use your just general good old fashioned corkies that you put on this line sliding up and down above your beta eggs. So don't forget about that. You can add stuff to your line, but I'm showing you the most natural and easiest way to rig this up. So what I'm gonna do here, now I'm gonna talk about my eggs. Eggs are very important. Steelhead, winter steelhead especially, love eggs that are very natural. A lot of people sometimes don't even cure them. They just put borax or any kind of sulfite on those eggs just to dry them out and cure them. Um, I like to add a little bit of krill. I like to add a little bit of the addicted winter chrome blend to my eggs as I cure them. And then I use the Procure Natural Egg Cure. It's like the fire pink or, or just the plain natural. It's more of a light, natural pink color and it keeps those eggs basically the same color as they come out of that fish. So. What I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna demonstrate about how big a size of eggs that we wanna have here when we go to fish. So these are actually coho eggs that I had from this fall, which are great. Fresh steelhead eggs are even better, uh, mainly because of the berry size. As you look here, each one of these eggs is about a size of a six mil bead. So that being said, we don't need a lot. What I'm gonna do is now that I have that little bead out there, I'm gonna cut about four or five of these little eggs off, just like so. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to use either big clumps to, to fish big, dirty, heavy water and or these little tiny baby clumps using that size two hook to really kind of key in on those fish's natural feeding tendencies. So I'm going to take this little number two, bring out my egg loop here. I'm going to take and thread that tiny little piece of eggs on there twice, just like so, setting it down the hook and sucking that right down onto that shank. So there you have it, you guys. That's about as small as you can go. This is more of a size, probably 10 to 12 presentation, which works great in like the low clear water that we have behind us today. If you wanted to go a little bit bigger or you even made a couple casts and you wanna try a little bit more bait on there, you can go ahead, trim off some more of that, add it to your hook and run that egg loop right around it there giving yourself a little bit bigger presentation and keying in on those fishes. Again, probably most natural bit of, of feeding tendency that they have, which are those row during the spawn floating down the river. So there's your perfect little beta eggs, nice and stinky. You can add any kind of scent, anisent, or anything else to that, but that's the way I like to fish my row. So guys, what we're gonna talk about next is probably the most common way of fishing row, and that is with the drift fishing setup. What I have here is, is a little bit different rod than this float setup. This is a nine foot, eight to 17 pound Guide Select Pro. This is in the spinning model. You can get this in the, in the drift fishing model as well, which would be a bait caster rod. I like that drift fishing setup either way. It's a little bit easier with a bait caster because you can feel the bottom of the river a little bit more and it gives you a little more sensitivity just because of the way you hold the rod. But you can emulate that the same with the spinning reel like we have here. So nine foot, eight to 17, again, the C40 Kaimar. But for this ad adaption, I'm gonna use 30 pound braid instead of the 40 because that 30 pound is gonna cut through that water column better and get you down to the bottom quicker since we're gonna be dragging this through. 
Mainly you're gonna use this, this technique if you're fishing different kind of water, more fast water rather than you could fish fast water with the float setup, but this is gonna get you down and in front of those fish and it offers a little bit different presentation than a float setup will while fishing this row. So got the 30 pound braid all the way to my 20 pound bumper. The 20 pound bumper here is key because you don't wanna be drift fishing with braid and get snagged up all day and leave your braided line in the river. That What that does is it ruins fishing holes and it makes everybody snag up after you leave a big chunk of braid in the river and it'll completely ruin the spot. So use that bumper so that if you do break off, it breaks off at your weight and or the weight just comes off. But you don't want to dr drift fish with your braided straight to your weight ever because you're just going to leave a mess in the river and we don't want to do that. We want to keep our rivers clean. So going from that 20 pound bumper, I'm going down to my three way swivel once again with my piece of pencil lead. There's different ways to do this. Again, this adaption's a little bit better if you use that piece of line with the hollow core lead and pinch it on there. That way, if you do get snagged, you can just pull it out and that, that, that lead comes off instead of your entire setup. So the next key to this setup with this drift fishing with row is your leader length. I'm gonna go with 12 pound SS fluoro all the way to a number two hook. See here, I have a little bit of a bead on this one, a little six mil, eight mil bead. And that is for if, because we're gonna be drifting down the river, your eggs are more prone to be coming off before you get bit. And it's nice to have either, either a corky or a, a bead or something that offers another presentation down there. If so facto, your eggs come off or your row comes off as you're drifting down the river. So having a little egg Extra on there never hurts. But keeping that leader length shorter is what's gonna be key for fishing this row. You have to imagine how, how far off the bottom these fish are gonna be. The row floats pretty well, and especially if you have any kind of corky on there. So if you go with a super long six, seven foot leader, first off, we don't ever recommend that anyways, because we all think you're just trying to snag fish. But what I like to use is at least three to five feet so that you can work that water column and keep that row in front of the fish to where they don't have to swim so far. You know, with a six foot leader, your eggs could be up at six feet and your weight's on the bottom and you never know. So having that shorter leader is key. It allows you to feel that bite a little quicker quicker when those fish grab it. And again, that number two hook is what I like to use for this just to keep those eggs on. So you don't want to go too small or else it's really hard to get the bait to stay on. What I have here again is tied with a little egg loop. So I'm going to set this up. Got my little bead I'm going to slide up. I'm going to pop out my little thing here. Take my row, a little bit bigger chunk this time. Hook through twice. Grab that hook point and suck that down right onto the back of the hook. And there it is, you guys. This is more of like a 14 mil presentation, but again, it's gonna work great. This is gonna be bouncing off the bottom a lot more uh, per se than you are gonna be with your float setup. So your eggs are gonna come off a little bit quicker. That's why you're gonna wanna use that borax or anything to really solidify those eggs so that they stay on your hook for a long time. So that's the way I like to set up. These are the two best presentations, or the two best methods to use to fish this throw. Now stay tuned guys, we're actually gonna step into the river and show you guys how to present these baits in front of the fish. So here we are on the riverbank now. What we have behind us is your atypical steelhead run. Walking speed, filled with boulders, moving slow, has a fast water head and a slow water tail out. The beauty of fishing with row is you can really kind of adapt it to any style of run, whether it be right in the middle of rapids or a big deep pool that the fish are gonna hold up in or your perfect little steelhead run like this. But what I'm gonna show you is basically just how to cast gently enough to keep your row on every time and how to mend your line and present this to the fish properly while using this half ounce float. So what I'm first gonna do is kind of guess the depth out there Imagine if I walked out into the river and how deep it is compared to my body, that's where I'm gonna set my bobber stop. So this hole right here is probably only about a foot and a half. So I have my bobber stop set to the out of depth right here. There we go. Got my lead ready, got my row on here. And the key to fishing this is casting delicately. We don't wanna whip really hard out in the middle of the river like you can with a jig or a worm because you don't want your bait to fly off after every single cast. That's the key to have quality bait is so that it stays on your hook so you're not constantly rebaiting and you're always effectively fishing. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna start our cast at about 45 up river as we always do when we're using a float and we're gonna end it clear down in this tail out. We're gonna let this run all the way through here, mending at, key, at crucial times so that we get a nice perfect drift because again you need these eggs bouncing down the bottom going slowly through the working going slowly working through the section and and getting right in front of those face so they're enticed to bite so here we go I'm gonna go across. Normally we're gonna start close, go to the middle and go far, but we have low water conditions here. I'm gonna put it right in that main seam because really with these low water conditions, you're only gonna get so many chances at these fish. So make those first couple casts count. So I'm gonna cast right over there into the sweet spot. 
just off that bubble line. You saw how I did that nice and delicately by pointing my rod downriver and slowly arching my cast out into the middle rather than throwing it or whipping it from one side of my body and or over my head. So now that I have this started, what I wanna do is always, always, always first bend that line right away. What I like to do is I like to mend right at the beginning. I like to mend at one quarter drift, which I just did, and then I'm gonna mend at three quarters. So as that starts to work its way down the river, I'm gonna keep giving it line by lifting my tip ever so gently, dumping that line down all the way, letting that current carry that bobber at a steady speed, the exact speed of the current, and sending it down all the way into the tail out, where I'm gonna let that finish into the end, and then I'm gonna reel it back in. I never like to really extend my cast more than about 50 to 75 yards. What I tell people is fish with your feet, or if you're in a boat, you're gonna pick up your anchor and you're gonna move down. It's very ineffective to let your line, long line down the end of the hole all day long. Because what's happening is once you get to the end, your gear is not on the bottom and you're not effectively fishing anymore. So I like to fish a certain distance. If you're in a big long run, it's better to move than it is to just let it drift. So see my eggs are still all happy and healthy on there. I'm gonna make one more cast out there right over into that bubble line. The foam is home for these fish. Again, mending right at the beginning of the cast, allowing that stuff to sink right down into the bottom. And you see how I actually have my line, my bail open with my finger over the line. Why I'm doing that is so I can grab the line and adjust that mend at the same time as, as be able to close my bail quickly if that float goes under, because we want to close in real quick, not so much set the hook really hard, but close this bail in real quick as soon as that float goes down. So. Again, lifting my tip up each time, giving that rod about 10 feet of line with every time I lift that rod tip, just like so. What I don't like to see people do is leave their rod tip low. Leaving your rod tip low allows too much line to grab onto the water. What, that's why we're using such a long rod, is so we have that length up in, the, up in the sky to be able to mend that line efficiently. So keep that rod tip high, lift, and let that line out each time so that you get a nice natural float down through that run every single time. One key thing I don't think people do enough is changing their depth. Don't go up to a run, especially if it's one like this, and fish only one depth. You wanna start shallow and work your way down to the bottom. So first step, again, is identify the depth. Make your mends at the crucial times, just like so, and allow that extended drift with this float to really cover a lot of water for you as you fish down the river. So that's the beauty of these floats, is you can cover just about any type of water without getting stuck. So keep that in mind, you guys. This is the easiest way to fish with a float set up with this row, and it's, again, a very natural and a very effective way to catch these winter steelhead. All right, everybody, so we're gonna wrap this up by showing you how to use the same setup in the drift fishing aspect. What we have behind us is a little more ADAPT drift fishing water, something that's moving, something that's fast and choppy so that you have enough current to carry this setup down the river on the bottom. If you try to fish really slow, deep tail out, you're not gonna get the same presentation as you would in this fast water. So I have, I set my, my weight to however fast I think the water is or however deep. Right here it's very shallow and riffly, so I'm going with not very much weight. Again, down to a three and a half foot leader, down to my bead and my rail. So what I'm gonna show you here is your angles of cast and how to keep this drifting through the run so that you get a, an effective presentation every time. So what we really wanna do as we start to fish this drift fishing setup is never really cast much more than 45 degrees up river. Even 45 degrees sometimes is too much. A lot of times you'll start your drift at 90 and prolong it down to 45 below you or even 90 below you while either letting line out to allow that drift to extend and or just fishing it till the end of your line and then bringing it back in. So what I'm gonna do here, because we have a little bit faster water, I'm gonna start at about 90 degrees out across this shallow water. Now this isn't a method you really wanna do that close middle far technique with that I've talked so much about everything else. You wanna to cast to that main current seam, get that, that bait down below that main current and drift fish it through. So here we go. I'm gonna go out at 90 degrees, all the way across into that current. Again, making a nice delicate cast so that your eggs stay on there. And I'm gonna allow that to just drag right on through there. That's bouncing off the bottom, I'm reeling and keeping my line tight the entire time so that I'm not gonna hang up in the rocks. You see how nice and slow that's going through? That's drifting those eggs right down along. I can feel every rock, every little piece of sand, 
and everything else really by the way I'm holding that rod. See how I have it right in my forefingers allowing that straight point of contact, keeping my tip at 45 degrees and keeping that straight point of contact to my egg so that I can feel every bit of sensitivity. If you keep your rod tip in one point and let that work across, you're never gonna get that full sensitivity in your rod tip. So what I'll do again, I'm gonna reel that back in and see my egg stayed on there nice. That's a sign you got some nice eggs. Again, we're gonna go straight across at 90. Landing that in that current seam, I'm gonna reel it tight until I feel bottom and then I'm gonna let it start to work. Keeping again that tip at 45 and keeping your tip right along in line with your, letter, with your leader line. Following it straight down, again, tip up, reeling down when you feel slack and waiting for every little bit of sensitivity in that rod. What we're feeling for as far as the bite is either a trout bite or a straight slam. There's never really anything in between as far as drift fishing these eggs. Those fish are either gonna swim up, take them, and run back the opposite direction, and or they're gonna grab them and shake their head, and that's gonna feel more like a trout bite. But when those fish swim up and they grab those eggs heavily, they're gonna grab them and swim back to where they came from, and it's gonna give a good jerk on that line. With the drift fishing, you really do wanna give a good hook set. It's not one of those methods where you let the fish grab it and start reeling. As soon as you feel that bite, you're you're gonna set that hook solid and pin that fish right in the side of the mouth. It's key to try to set the hook early. We're using this row, sometimes these fish really engulf it and you really don't want that, especially if you know there's native fish around. So when you feel that early bite, setting the hook right away and having that sensitive rod so that you can feel that bite, something that's not noodly. That's why I love this eight to 17 pound in this drift fishing setup because it's got a stiff backbone and a light tip. So you can see on and feel all the action in the tip of your rod, but when it comes down to setting that hook or having that backbone, you got it down here in your foregrip. So one more time I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys. I'm gonna go straight across at 90, land that right in the current seam, close my bail. I'm gonna reel up two or three times and I'm gonna let that stuff work right through the strike zone. Again, following that line down, feeling every little rock, and you see when I feel a rock or I feel a snag, I just lift. I don't do a big hook set, I pull it out of that snag and I let it continue its drift down and through. Ooh, got something there, it was bottom, but you guys get the gist. We hope that made it a little bit easier for you guys to understand how to drift fish with this rail. The most crucial parts, again, are having a good solid egg loop that keeps that, those, that row on the hook. And again, having a good egg here, which keeps those, those eggs good and solid so that they stay on your hook the longest as you're trying to fish them. If you guys like what you've seen here today and it helped you learn a lot, be sure to go down here and subscribe to our YouTube channel, you guys. We have new how-to videos coming out every single day that's really just for the benefit of you guys and for the benefit of fishing. We wanna see everybody out there happy on the river and catching fish. And more people on the river means more fish in the river. Give Mother Nature some support, give your local hatchery some support. And again, be sure to subscribe to this channel down here. You guys wanna get all the newsletters and everything we have coming out every day. Be sure to comment below with what you thought of this video. If you guys have any input or you wanna hear anything more, like, share it out there, and you guys stay fishy. We'll see you out there on the river.